long players welcome to the long play listening party the show where we go deep on local music writing recording inspiration gear and whatever else sounds good to us i'm howie howard from mr furious records and welcome to the best music we heard in 2021 party line uh the show is going to be a little different it's loose people are going to be coming in and out friends past guests um i'll be you know, trying to introduce an MC a little bit and maybe riding that mute button, you know, if it gets too crazy in here. Uh, But right now, I'm joined, as always, by Nate Holt, Astrology's Music. What's going on, Nate? What's going on, everybody? And we've got Till Willis in the house. What's going on, Till? You know, getting by. Getting by. Uh, Do you, Till, do you have, uh, you know, an album or two that you want to talk about that really... uh, Ring a chord with you this year? Um, sure. This one in particular. Oh, we've got a visual. The uh, Jimbo Mathis, Andrew Bird, These 13 that uh, came out this year that was just one of my go-tos since uh, I first picked it up. Um, I had kind of forgotten that Andrew Bird played with the Squirrel Nut Zippers for a while, which is, of course, where Jimbo Mathis uh, was from. <laughs> Oh, okay, thank and, uh, you for that context. That's good. Yeah. 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 Um, so, yeah, I guess they finally had gotten back together to do a project, and it's the whole thing is pretty much just the two of them. So it's real stripped down, real sparsely recorded, kind of extremely rootsy um, in what they're doing. As a funny aside story, I, I met Jimbo Mathis once by total happenstance. I was a fan of the of the squirrel nut zippers i knew he had a recording studio in mississippi where like elvis costello and some other people had stopped in i had played a gig in nashville was headed through mississippi to visit some people and saw the road sign like oh there's the town where his studio is you know i uh i'm just gonna see if i can pop in and i get in this small town find the studio it's like 10 in the morning the doors open the lights are on so i just walked in and from the back, he's sitting on a couch drinking a beer. And he looks up and he's like, hey, how's it going? You want a beer? <laughs> sure, I'll take a beer. So the next thing I know, like Jimbo Mathis is showing me vintage guitars and we're drinking <laughs> in the morning. And, uh, you know, it was so, yeah, he was a super cool, nice guy. Uh, the other one here is uh, I was That's fantastic. That's an amazing story. A second full length from um, – Cedric Burnside with uh, I'd Be Trying, which I think he's doing some of the best blues out there right now. And that's, of course, R.L. Burnside's grandson who played drums forever with R.L. But on this, he's doing more guitar playing. Um, and it's super cool. Produced at Royal Studios in Memphis, Willie Mitchell's place. So those are two that I was super nice. Yeah. Very cool. I want to bring uh, Rob Spector into the conversation. Rob, um, either unmute yourself or I can. Okay, you got it. I'm uh, I'm riding the mute buttons to, uh, as people come in and out. What, what's going on? I have to chop the show up a little bit. No problem. Hey, well, no thank problem. you for bringing the festivities. Yeah, yeah. Rob's got a very got those New York uh, holiday lights. Love that. Uh, Till, your lights are looking really good, too. You've got some yellow and red, like, studio mood lighting going on. Just my normal lights up here. <laughs> okay. I guess maybe I can see them better. Last time you were on your phone, and, like, we only saw you from, like, the nose up. Ah. And uh, I feel like I can see you a little better tonight. Uh, Nate, you want to – is there any music you want to uh, talk about tonight? Well, uh... um, well, shit, yeah. I mean – we, uh, you know, there uh, there was some stuff I wanted to get into in terms of just like, you know, <laughs> I mean, people do it, and and but I'm I'm I just I can't say that I'm, you know, what what's the best that, what that I've heard, but uh, you know, things that have stood out to me though, um, and this is, I mean, uh, I so full disclosure, I played. Uh, sat in with Till's band the other night, uh, and so in doing so, I had a uh, list of songs that, you know, you know, there's only a few that Till asked me to learn, but I ended up listening to all of them, or all of them that I could find anyway, because some of them were, like, at least two of them were just, like, brand new songs that you guys um, hadn't even recorded yet. 
so uh but some of this uh so promise of ritual thinking uh that track um really 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 dig that track cool. uh, and just then dirt flowers in general um the album thank you um like paper plant uh paper cranes on that um yeah man just uh I, you know, I'm not, I, I speak in, in, you know, broad terms a lot of times, but um, I hope that doesn't detract from like the fact that like, I really enjoy uh, those songs and, and that music. Um, so that was definitely on my list of, of, of stuff from this awesome. year. Um, yeah. Yeah. I know that, that Dirt Fires came out in 2018, but. Well, or at least, at least it's not, it's not it's not this this year technically but what i heard this year i guess i'm going to stretch the definition a little bit yeah so till put out a great record this year in june morning day we covered it on the show so if you haven't heard that episode go back and listen i'm i'm catching up here i want to lay a couple uh lay a couple things out first of all this whole show it's the best music we heard we're not making any normative claims here so nate you're safe <laughs> um, I'm in a safe space. Yeah, yeah. My full <laughs> list is up at MrFuriousRecords.com. It's the earliest I've ever posted it. Very, very proud of that. It does have a couple things on it that weren't re even released this year. Uh, a couple records from the 90s that I got into this year. So um, old stuff is eligible. That You know, uh, it's the best music we all heard. Second, I can't believe... Royce is uh, putting up drywall at the studio tonight. Yeah, uh, we got a late text from Royce. He says hi to everybody, uh, but m may dip in later. Probably not. I hope he does. But you know, studio's got to come first. So, uh, so that's what's going on with Royce. And uh, Royce, if you're listening, uh, we miss you, and we'll see you soon. Uh, Rob, you want to give it another go? What's going on? Oh no, we still can't hear you, buddy. Maybe so. I'm not going to go through uh, my whole list, and uh, but um, and scrolling then through. You know, I, I've seen a couple, uh, you know, articles and tweets and you know whatnot, um, talking about how hey, you know, how how are you going to put out a best of, you know, the year list in the you know when you're still in the year. Which I'm not. That's no slight to you, Howie. I mean, I understand why why it, it's done, but uh, I I kind of thought it was a good point. Like, why why does it have to come out that year? Why can't it wait till like January of the next year? And like, then you've listened to, you know, or at least you've theoretically listened to uh, the music that's come yeah. out. Yeah. No, I year. totally agree. Actually, in my perfect world, the lists would come out January one or or later. Mm -hmm. um, but that is just not where american culture is you know <laughs> right dominant culture here we look forward we you know are air quote optimistic or whatever and um so that's that's just not practical i think socially i do think the ones that come out like thanksgiving weekend you know or right after that's that's too early i think mid to late december is where you want to yeah. be like I, I don't know about you guys but to, for me you know, yesterday at work, which is the 13th, um, we're recording this on Tuesday night. Yesterday it was at work. It was pretty clear, like, people are starting to check out, <laughs> you know. Yeah, so I sure. think that marks maybe where where we can start to have the look back and and, and do the thing. Um, I take that point. People's attention. And then once you get past that year end, you're kind of like, the appetite, I guess, for looking back is there's there's a very short window for that. People people want that fresh start. I think I don't know. Till what what would be your ideal time to put out a best of list? You know, I'm not sure. I'm not. Uh, I have a hard time with best of lists. I'm kind of with Nate. If it's mm -hmm. new to me that I heard this year, it kind of doesn't matter if it came out this year to be top of my list. Um, I was also just thinking as you were saying that it's like knowing that London Calling technically came out in 1979, but was named like, you know, best album of 1980. And yeah. Joe's always, put, well, it came out in 79. 
<laughs> that's interesting. I didn't realize that. Well, that's that, another argument for including the anniversary, you know, older stuff. Wherever you draw the line, as far as how far back you go, but but sure. looking a little bit beyond the literal year, um, I've always got a couple a couple of old things, and my so my old records since I mentioned it earlier. Uh, the old ones I put on my list are uh, the first medicine record uh, from 1992. That's shot forth self living. I don't know how I avoided medicine throughout the 90s, but I but I did. And uh, when I discovered Shot Forth Self Living this year, um, I, I mean, I just thought it was amazing. There was and, another uh, M, M band uh, in that period. Morphine? Was it Morphine? Yeah. 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 They were badass. Yeah. Yeah, both good bands. But, uh, not to detract from what you were talking about, but that's because I was like thinking of another M band that was around that general time period absolutely and yeah i was i kind of wanted to wait until you know uh voice was here here's clown <laughs> what's up <laughs> no nah, I'm, I'm i'm uh i'm quoting breaking bad because that's that's what i do <laughs> nice okay yeah um i i wanted to wait until uh royce and uh approach and reach or some rappers were here to talk about this but uh, early in the year, uh, I watched the YouTube documentary Till Infinity about the souls of mischief, mm-hmm. uh, which were like early 90s Oakland based uh, hip hop crew. And I'm I'm like still falling down that rabbit hole into like individual members, discographies and stuff. But uh, the hieroglyphics record Third Eye Vision from 1998 is just an absolute gem that I kind of missed in my 2000s backpacker you know type listening uh, i kind of missed that whole scene and so it's been a real joy to to dig into it and and there's so much good stuff um fr- from kind of that whole scene awesome mm-hmm. yeah that's interesting um i so when i was making my list i, I tried to keep in so, you know like within some boundaries and part of that was trying to keep it with you know albums or music that was you know out this year obviously i i didn't you know stick to that strictly because i picked some of the stuff that was not quite this year uh but i think most of the other things came out this year but um I had a point I was going to make. It was about music that I heard that did not come out this year that I was going to add to the list. But let's see if uh, Rob. I just did the test call and it worked great. It works great. And it oh, sounds- look at that. Great. Look at this. That's what I should have done. I should have done the test call, y'all. <laughs> Why didn't I do that? <laughs> Why didn't I do that? Such a failure. Uh, Howie, I will share. This is the only Microsoft Teams thing I ever do is is this podcast just just a heads up feels kind of appropriate doesn't it <laughs> it does indeed it does i, indeed. I find y'all. what software i like and i stick to it you know <laughs> it's true it's true and some of it is reaper and some of it is is this right and some of it's pro tools <laughs> le 5.3.1 for 15 years <laughs> 15 years <laughs> on a digio one. Oh my yep. god yeah. Well, let's talk music, man. What's uh, what's top of your list? Uh, top of the list? Uh, man, there was a lot of stuff this year. I don't know about y'all, but I felt like 2020 was just a massive year for huge records. Like, um, And I'm not sure that this year necessarily lived up to that. Um, but uh, considering, you know, the rebound from the pandemic year, um, I kind of, I think I when you first mentioned we were having this get together, I was kind of thinking like, Oh man, there weren't any good records this year. This was kind of a bum year. And then I started going through everything I'd listened to in 2021. I'm like, oh, I think, I think this is a pretty good year for music. Like there were some, there were some, there were some bangers in there. There was some good stuff. I think um, the body of work of 2021 is incredible. I thought this was a, I found so much good music this year, but I think you're right. There wasn't like a tent pole 
Except Adele, I guess, if you listen to Adele. Yeah, well, well, I was thinking last year uh, in particular, like I, I think every year Fiona Apple puts out a record is just like uh, a milestone because it only happens like every eight or nine years. So, yeah. Um, comparing a a uh, non-Fiona to a Fiona year, I guess, is kind of an unfair comparison. But um, just the exercise of going through this, of finding uh, the records I had listened to in 2021, I was like, man, there were some bangers this year there's some huge bangers this year um well give us a couple well the the first one that struck me uh was nancy wilson's solo record did you all hear that Mm -mm. nancy wilson from heart yeah Um, yeah so Mm -hmm. she's the sister that no one remembers uh because she's playing like rhythm and backup uh she put out her first solo record this year and it was incredible all right. Like it was really remarkable. Um, so it was a mix of covers and original stuff. Uh, the record was called You and Me, came out um, uh, in the summer. And the thing that struck me is a, a, for, for a pandemic record, which it, it sounded like uh, in all the interviews that uh, folks had with her, it was, a, it, it was a pandemic project. A lot of the songs like focused on loss uh, in a in a real artful way uh she had a song that she wrote in the 90s for lane staley from uh alice in chains she had a, a kind of a medley of uh, an acoustic really tasteful medley of a lot of eddie van halen's big riffs uh that closes out the record called for edward uh and then she had some really artfully arranged covers including probably the best cover of pearl jam's daughter you have ever heard in your life um, All right. So it was a it was a wild mix of stuff that you would never expect from someone who is in heart. Um, <laughs> and I was shocked by how how often I listened to that record straight through. It was it was really incredible. All right. That's going on my checkout list. Rob, give us one more and then we're going to bring in Stick Figure. Stick Figure. Good to see you, buddy. Um, next one. Uh, it, it, it's kind of a divergence. Uh, did you hear the Gojira record, the new Gojira record, Fortitude? Not the new one, no. I've listened to the band before. Yeah, French, uh, super proggy, uh, highly technical death metal band. This one uh, absolutely shreds. Uh, so if you're a fan of stuff like The Haunted or Opeth, or if you like your metal to be on the highly technical side, but you also don't want it to be necessarily doom and gloom. You want something with like a really positive, righteous mes- uh, message. Uh, the new Gojira record is really incredible. Um, and the story of how it came together uh, was really interesting. It was um, actually recorded uh, here in New York at this uh, studio in Queens. And uh, they had uh, all the session time booked, everything ready to go for, for March 2020. Obviously, uh, that did not occur, especially here in New York. Right. Uh, so they kind of had to put the kibosh on it for a little bit. But once they finally were able to reassemble, uh, at least in some of the uh, interviews that I've read with uh, some of the folks in the band, it seemed like the additional incubation time uh, was really formative for the songs. And you can you can hear it in a big way. Um, I can't say that I've been a huge Gojira aficionado by any stretch of the imagination, but this record is one that I've listened to front to back quite a bit. Um, and it's... If you like really technical, strong metal, um, but you don't necessarily want to hear Slayer or like everything's going to die, burr, 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 burr. <laughs> you want to hear something that's a little more up. Uh, uh, Fortitude the is, is a really inspiring record. What's what that, Nate? I was asking what the name of the record was. and then I uh, said, Fortitude. Fortitude is the name of the record. Gojira's Fortitude. All right, cool. Yeah, Those are both I, I would going start... on my list to check out. Yeah, I would start with uh, Born for One Thing, which is the opening track. Uh, and then the next track to listen to is Amazonia. Uh, both are really, really tasty. Outstanding. Sweet. Stick, what's going on? What's going on, y'all? How you guys doing? What's hey, up? Good. Hey. Just hanging good, out, talking good. about some of the best music we heard this year. doesn't have to be released this year, necessarily. Uh, but is there anything that jumped out at you this year that you want to talk about? Um, I would say, oh man, uh, uh, there was a, there are a few records. The one that stands out in my mind the most was uh, Makami's uh, "Pray for Haiti." Yeah, that yeah. that got a lot of burn from me from me this year. 
uh, Makami, Newark, New Jersey. Uh, MC, hip hop artist, released album under Griselda. A lot of the themes were really heavy on, uh, you know, capitalism and uh, colonialism as it related to his native land in the Caribbean, uh, Haiti. He released the album on uh, Griselda Records with West Side Gun and some others. Uh, it kind of puts you in the mind, at least for me, he kind of put me in the mind of like early most deaf. He does in, in Wyclef because he does that thing where he, he doesn't just rap. He also does a lot of cool uh, entirely in Patois and, you know, Haitian Creole singing uh, that I really appreciated over some really like interesting production, um, some dark stuff, some soulful stuff, some, some hopeful stuff uh, about there's like a three three song suite at the beginning where uh, Conductor Williams produced produced mm. in Kansas City. And yeah. uh, his production on it is incredible uh, on on the album. But but on the whole, it was a very interesting rap album um, in a year where like rap was really, really super saturated with trendy TikTok dances and stuff. And I found this album to be to be a standout. Like one that stood out is actually interesting and different. Yeah, there wasn't really anything else that sounded like it, was there? I mean, it was. Yeah, there was nothing like it. Like, you like know, I... man, he's got a track on. I had this album on my list. It's K Trinata's Intimidated EP. Oh, yeah, that's really good. He's he's a, he's a he third has track that. on that. Yeah. Hey, real Amazing. cool, like, dance track. Like, he's an incredibly versatile artist. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, he really is in the, the vocalist. He's, like, in that rare spot for rappers who are, like, vocalists yeah. beyond just rapping on the beat in the way that you would expect, you know, in one way or another. What like, was that record? Story you, what was that record yeah. that you were talking about just now, the name of that record? Oh, uh, the one I like. The, my favorite song on there is called The Stella, the Stella Rave Theory. Uh, but. Okay. In my mm. second favorite, no, no, I take it back. My favorite is Criminal with mm. the K. I don't speak French, but it's like one of those, you know, you just, you just like the song. Doesn't even matter what's being said. I, was like, I just like this record. I'm not even sure what's being said or what any of this means, but. <laughs> when, the, when in the year did this come out, Dick? It came out early in the year. I want to say it came out. Spring? Maybe spring. So before all the craziness happened, like they're they're yeah. president got assassinated this year. Yeah, <laughs> like that some was dudes like was rolled not, in and gunned him down. Yeah, that was the craziest part about it because I'm sure it would have made the record if <laughs> 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 that would have made the record had he had he recorded it after it happened. Well, and uh, he already has uh, another album out. I haven't even listened to it yet, but yeah, he, put he put out, out a new out, album like last I, week. I just the new one. Yeah, he put out another one just this month. But yeah, Makami's uh, Pray for Paris. That was my, I mean, Pray for Haiti. Pray for Haiti. That was my favorite wow. this year. I would say my second favorite was a Nigerian uh, soul singer named Tims, T-E-M-S. She put out a record called... Uh, what orange sounds like, I believe that's the title. It has orange in the title, but uh, if orange was a place, if orange was a place, thank you. Yeah, that's that's a really great project too. It's a really great project. I enjoyed that as well. I, it blew up this year. It was it was fairly that's, big. I was late on that. I didn't even like it. It played automatically. I was listening to Snow Allegra's new record, mm. and I liked it, but it was like a, I don't know. Snow Allegra is like faux Sade for me sometimes. Ooh, Ooh that's cold. <laughs> I know it's mean, but <laughs> but the Tim's record was like it was a it was familiar but new. That's what I'm always trying to. That's what I always look for: familiar but something new happening. So that's why I really enjoy Tim's new T E M S. Yeah, I enjoyed her new project. That familiar but new that makes a lot of sense. Uh, because your album, East of McVicker Ave, yeah. gave me that, you know, that kind of vibe, which is on my list, by the way. So. Well, thank, well, that's, you know, I was I couldn't pick my own records, but <laughs> I got two records out, East of McVicker Ave, 
and Joy Land with Conductor Williams. Make sure you go you know check what? out his physical copies of events currently. Bring that up in, in, sh- in, in this show because I was like, what What are the, the rules around that? Are you going to pick your own stuff for what? Yes. Are you going to be like, homies, homies. Yeah, I mean, I'm <laughs> not going to pick my own records, man. I, I'm just, not that know, I'm trying to pick my own stuff. I'm just asking if that was, you know, if you. I know if that was allowed. Yes. <laughs> What's I up? Don't, I don't pick my own stuff, but I do pick my friend's stuff. So yeah, well, I think that's fair. No rules. Know. And <laughs> speaking of friends, uh, let's welcome Approach into the call. What's going on, Approach? Hey, bro. What's going on? How are y'all? What's up, man? How you doing, G? How you doing? Man. I'm chilling, man. I'm over here battling bronchitis. So oh man, oh, oh man. Some... Yeah, man. You know. <laughs> You said you had a little cold the other night, and now it's bronchitis. Yeah, man. Had to go get checked out because I couldn't sleep. So, you know. You know, there's like a million other diseases besides COVID going around right now. Like, like there's this mad, like, GI bug going through my mom's school. And apparently, like, three separate kids, like, crap their pants in, like, the same five-minute period, like, right in the middle of the no. Wow. It was uh, it was a brown alert. It was a straight up <laughs> like serious trout well, emergency. It was not a good scene. <laughs> but when you have oh, man. I have a kid under the age of, you know, four. I have a three year old, so I mean, y'all it know. Comes home. Yeah. All comes <laughs> home. And then when it's home, they touch every damn thing. So <laughs> you just you know, you pick your time. I'm not one to be sick, so you know, we'll figure it out. Well, at least you don't have you don't have the vid. And I know that's, that's where it's at right now. Oh man, <laughs> that test though. I've had that test twice in the last two weeks. Is mm-hmm. not the business. No, yeah. it's nose. The, the brain yeah. tickler. <laughs> yeah, and I got a big nose, but it sure feels tight when they put that thing. <laughs> it feels like they really doing something to you. Like something. you feel violated. Let's be honest. Yeah. Violated. Feel feel like violated. Yeah. I don't oh, that's, that's what I imagine every time I do they do. I was like, this is what powder feel like, I guess. I'm going to start wearing a mask around again, man. Damn. I, I, I oh, never stopped. Me. Back. We I going never back stopped. inside. I know y'all know that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> going back inside. Yep. Yep. It might be a riot this time, but it's going to happen. You don't have to go back oh, yeah. inside. Well, you know, regardless, I don't know what everybody's views are here, but we just, as as one, we just got to tighten up. I don't, you know, I don't care if people, what anybody's views are. I'm like, if the option is to live like this or do this and kind of get back to where we were. Sign me up. Right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Right, regardless. I need to get of- my booster. That's where I'm at with it. I need my booster. I'm taking all the shots. Hey, yes. all- <laughs> That's what I'm saying, man. Yeah, um, man. The booster wasn't that bad. I didn't, no. didn't yeah. feel that I was totally cool with that. Did you have any after effects, though? No, not, not at all. <laughs> not like the second, the second shot was one that gave me a whole bunch of... Ed, that's what everybody I talked to says. Is the second third, one, and it was true for me, too. Yeah. yeah. I just got a sore, a sore arm with the second shot. I don't know my booster's next week. My wife got her booster, and she did... She did fine, but she got she was kind of messed up on that second one the first time. It kind of that's what got, saw me, man. Was that second shot? I got the yeah. first one was fine, but that second one, yeah. fixed. Benito, forget I about got, it. My flu on the same day, so you'd think if they that, were gonna. That's what I'm doing. That's what <laughs> I'm doing. I did, man. One yeah. in both arms. Uh-huh. Yep. Shout yeah. out to everybody here getting inoculated, man. I'm just, hey. This is great. Hey, you know what these. Are. Especially with kids, man. Especially with kids yep. under the age that can't, don't even have the option. It's I'm like I, I feel like it's my, you know, it's my responsibility as like a caring parent. If I really care, then why would not put myself in the best position to care for him? Exactly. And so, if I'm out here, I work at the university. Yeah. So if I'm out here where I could catch something, um, and then I bring it home to him, mm-hmm. that's not fair. Or if something happens to me because I'm a gentleman of a certain age, you know. <laughs> then he's then he's without pops. So. 
Yeah. You, you all know I'm preaching to the choir, but it's just simple math for me. It just yeah. one plus one. Two kids and a and an elderly person. So yep. I can't even roll the dice. I can't even if I wanted to. So I think my mom's immune compromised and my dad's a, a transplant recipient. So Oh wow. It's it's bigger yeah. It's, yeah. but that could also be your neighbor. Or that mm -hmm. also could be right. your your son or daughter's best friend, parents. Absolutely. Never know. So, For sure. You know. But man, you gotta tell us your album of the year. We got all serious. Oh, that, yeah! I came in and, and and Nate was feeling good. I was like, man, he had he got the right combo there, looking fly. <laughs> I was like, I came in, man, Nate's warm. Uh, Look at him. that's my guy. Sitting right at Terror Records, dry fit hoodie. Boy, Wait, one of my best friends on the planet. At TerrorRecords.bandcamp.com. What's good? I'm like, DJ Khalid. This is quality, quality. I don't have hardwood floors with all that right, drip. Man. <laughs> <laughs> you got, you got, man, look at that. You got stuff for your thumbs right there. Oh, look at uh, you. Oh, 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 that's real. Yes, sir. I don't, I haven't thought of my record. Uh, what'd y'all say? I threw Mock out there, Makami. That was pray for, pray, pray for Haiti. I want to say Paris, but yeah. Man, I, mm. I loved it. I'm kind of in a, I might be in like a three way tie. Give mm -hmm. us all three uh, Silk Sonic, um, Common, oh, good. and uh, Tyler the Creator. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'll, probably, I'll probably go, oof, I don't know, because it was Nas for a while, but I'll probably say right now, the most joy I've had is with uh, Silk Sonic's record. Really? For, for me, for me, yeah. it's Bruno not, Mars was all over that, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. For me, it was Bruno like, Mars and Anderson Pack, correct? Yeah, really. For wow. me, it's like everything I'm ever searching for sonically. I'm always a music first guy, and mm. then, uh, then, then uh, lyrics and everything come after that. And so for me, and then I see the joy that it brings when I play it just around my son who has no peer pressure, no nothing. He just reacts to what he reacts to so right now that's kind of when i mean probably next week it'll be big boy and sleepy brown's album so i'm mm -hmm. just one i listen to too much music i also had a hand in a couple joyland is pretty damn close too I'm man say, not because you're getting, yep. not smoke it's it's it. you know? thank you and i, I always got used to mick vicker on his list Hey man, and Reach's record is right in there too. Yep. So mm -hmm. I'm gonna sit down next week when I have a week off and put it all together. And you know, my man Milk has so I'll I'll, I'll be conquering. I was about to say, man, Detura Records. What you got? Like nine releases this year? We did six so far. We got two more coming yeah. before the end of the year, so we'll be eight. Well, it's, uh, it's a jet coming out. I, right? I, I look, man. I, uh, not that'll that'll kick off next year. Okay. It'll be uh, Mr. Uh, Ghetto, Mr. Ghetto Gold and uh, Mad Awkward. Man, uh, there's some there's some gold on in, uh, on your Bandcamp page, man. Hey, man, we tight, bro. We I was, super, man. Us, man. We Looper. never fail, man. Milk, we just do no, a different no, way of being ourselves. Yeah, That's we just try. I mean, Till and I, Till, Till mentioned this too. It's it. How are you going to? I, I people do it. I can't do it. How are you going to say something is the best? Yeah, exactly. You just, you guys, I mean, to me, it's about, man, like, it, there's some recency bias, but there's also stuff that's been impacting, you know, impacts mm -hmm. you, and you're like, oh, I can't, you know, you don't forget about it, but I don't know, well, man. I, I, feel, I feel like it's, it's, I feel like it's wrong to, to say stuff, and I love that, that we're getting specific albums, and I love that there, there's a lot of, uh, uh, variety, but like to me, it's like, man, you got to give props to someone who's putting out, you know, that many records on, you know, that's on your label, oh, just quality music. Right. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, and on that note, Nate, like, approach. I want to, I want to ask a little favor, and you don't have to answer on the call here. You can, you can tell me later. But I think those Milk Drop records specifically kind of flew under the radar. Yep. So in 22, I want to get, if if you can help, I want to get Milk on the show, Not a and problem. I want to do 38 and Wet Paint because I I really want people to hear those albums. Um, yeah. yeah. They're 
They're really good. All right, Reach has joined the call. I uh, want to hear from Reach. What's going on, man? What's going on, gentlemen? There we are. How y'all doing? We're good. We're just kind of going around. Everybody's given one, two, three albums that uh, they love this year. Um, okay. Not necessarily saying, you know, they're the greatest thing for everybody, but just what, what hits you hard. We talking local? We talking national? Does it matter? It was one of each, maybe. All right. Um, so, uh, yeah, I've got a few, man. Um, I think probably locally, uh, Milk Drops 38. Yep. For sure. Uh, that would be on my list of locals. There's also a, a local R&B artist. Um, her name is Effie. She had a record called Curve, Your Enth Curve My Enthusiasm. Sorry, that released in, I believe, late October. So those would be a couple from what was her right name? around these parts. Her name is Effie, E-F-F-I-E. -E. That's oh. a dope record. Yeah, 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 yeah. She's really good. Very, very talented vocally. So really enjoyed her record. Um, so yeah, that, that, those are probably the two that I would mention right off top from right around these parts. There are certainly some other ones. Uh, but, you know, I'm just kind of scrambling to put my list together. So uh, we can always circle actually, back, man. Yeah, what, what was the what was the name of the Effie record? Her my enthusiasm. Yeah, her my enthusiasm. Oh. Yeah, curve like curve ball. So copy. Cool. Yes, sir. And we will. Yeah. I will look up all this stuff and put links in the show notes. So yeah. for listeners, go, go. there'll be links and you know a list for everything that we talk about in order. Go. Awesome. So yeah, those two. Y'all listen um, to the Rose Line record. Yeah, oh, man, that's in, that's that's in that's in my list right there, and it's uh, and because Howie, uh, you professed your your love for '90s R&B uh, with Reach, uh, talking to Reach, and man, I I love Americana, man, um, and uh, I I played with Richard Gintout and O.K. Okay Jones, and he wrote that kind of stuff for a little bit, and then it kind of changed a little bit. Um, but I've, I've, I've appreciated the Rose line because Colin's songwriting is amazing. And like, it's just, you know, he calls it like dad rock, but man, it's, it's great. It's yeah. great. Nicest dude. Mm -hmm. ever. Yep. yep. Yeah, man. Well, since you gave me the opportunity with the RB, I want to talk about the one R and B album that's on my list and then reach. I want to come back to you for anything national. Sure. Um, that you want to talk about, but um, on my list is uh, Now and Then Life Was Beautiful. She's an R&B singer out of the UK that um, really mixes like classic kind of 60s, 70s R&B with tons of modern production, incredible voice, great songs, always something like a little unexpected going on kind of in the mix. Um, really, really good. And but so this is her third LP. She started off with a, a pair of EPs that basically make an album. So she's she's one album away from a perfect <coughs> five album run. Um, and I don't doubt that, you know, in two or three years she's going to get there. So. OK, I love what I love what, uh, what record label is she on out there? I will have to look that up and circle back to you, maybe while Reach is talking about his national stuff. Hit us, Reach. Okay, so national, um, Tyler, call me if you get lost. Um, probably maybe number one on my list for the year. Um, excellent record. Um, table right for two, table for two, lucky day. Really Great. enjoyed his album. Very Great well record. produced. Uh, Joyce Rice, Overgrown. Great record. Another another really, really, really produced, well produced record. Probably my favorite R&B record for the year. Um, uh, Hitler Wears Hermes 8, West Side Gun. It's some, it's some, some local local time. We, we did a little real production. So, so. Yes, that's that's that one really good. Good. And uh, Yeba's album, um, Dawn, I think it was the title of the album. So yeah, that's my list. Outstanding. Tyler's gotten a couple couple shout outs here on the call. Well deserved. Yeah. For sure. Uh Rob now is on Little Tokyo. Hmm. Uh which is not something I'm familiar with, but there you go. 
Does Stick raise his hand? Stick has raised his hand. Thank, thank you, Nate. Dick, what's on your mind? Incredibly formal. Uh, <laughs> did you actually use the raise hand feature in this? Yeah, this it, man, that works. Man, I be this is my whole life right here. This is what I do all day long. <laughs> oh, Zoom, so your your Zoom game is like a lot better than ours. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> No. Nah, uh, Vince Staples self-titled project. I don't know if it counts as a album or EP or what, but I think I think I'm a bit I'm a long time Vince Staples fan. Yes, sir. I think that that is his best project. Green. Yes, sir. I didn't know it was possible to do. Like at first, I was I went through like this roller coaster of emotions with that project. I was like, why is it so short, and why is it so you know, uh, melodic -y or whatever. Like, I was irritated. And then, but the thing was, I just kept playing it. Bingo. And then I couldn't stop playing it. Bingo. And then I knew all the words. And I was like, he did it! <laughs> <laughs> he made his best album. Like, I was like, that's crazy. Like, that's how it happened. Like, that's how it felt. I was like, Oh no, he he tricked me into making like you know what I mean? Like he figured it out. Like that's crazy. But yeah, that was my third. That's my third. So I didn't have a third. I only had two. So I have Makami, Tim's. I hope I'm saying her name right. And yeah, yes. Tim, you are. Yeah. And Vince. Those are those are my three most played. And then like my honorable mention is the Isaiah Rashad record. Only because I was I liked it, but I was a smidge let down by it. I was let down, bro. Yeah, I was a smidge hurt. Yeah. I was, kinda, hurt. I was hurt too. I was like, they kind of dialed it in a little bit after making me wait a hundred years. Like that's it not too fair. syrupy. It was too syrupy. Yeah. I like, and I want you to Yeah. 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 I like Nas's album too. <laughs> controversial. I liked it a lot. I had uh <clears throat> opinions. It's controversial? Why 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 is Nas's record controversial? That's not just me. I have controversial opinions. I won't share them. This stick, man. This is all day with sticks. <laughs> is that right? This dude texted me at six o'clock in the morning. I promise. Oh, hello, Sean. He just wanted to tell me what I needed to do. <laughs> That's my family, though. <laughs> this is just him. Six o'clock in the morning, uh, telling me what I need to do. I was like, I love nah, this guy. And the Nas, I like the first one. I like King Disease one. And I just, I don't know, King's Disease 2 felt like it had too many reaches or something that's not going to, I don't know. Like, he, he rapped about uh, brunch. He uh, rapped about brunch? Bro. What, what song is the brunch song? I had to look. No. <laughs> I had to hear that. Uh, he made a video he, with brunch and it drove it home for Stig. He said, <laughs> oh, my God. Please say, please say it's in Williamsburg, Brooklyn. It has to be set in Williamsburg, Brooklyn. If he's talking about LA. brunch. Don't get me the line. Brunch Hold is up. in L.A. How is it? Oh, it's in L.A. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Oh, yeah. I, I, the only song right. that was. See, listen. See, that's the only thing I would object to. Like, like comparing L.A.'s brunch game to Brooklyn, I just don't think it's like, come on. Like, <laughs> don't <fuck. laughs> I'm not being unfair. I thought I was being unfair. But no, the song is called Brunch on Sundays. It is. <laughs> it is. It is. Wow. And it I was just like, I know he's older. I know he's mature. Older? Likely more mature than myself. Because when he said, it was like the way that brunch on Sunday. I was like, <laughs> like you don't, you're not selling me, Nas, that this is a song that you wanted to do. Make sure you listen to. <laughs> Make sure you listen to the album after you hear how John's described it. And yeah, then, please, please, please. Yeah. I'm nobody. I just, I love Nas, and I'm, yeah, a I stubborn, I'm a stubborn Nas fan. I'm the jerk who was like, when Nostradamus came out, was angry. I'm that yeah. guy. So don't, don't take, take my words with a grain of salt. I was the guy. Yeah, yeah I didn't you like every it. reason to be angry I'm with Nas. Guy. <laughs> you have every reason to be frustrated with Nas because he done he done put us on an emotional roller coaster. He's literally the Knicks as a rapper. He's <laughs> literally the Knicks as a rapper. Knocked it out of the park. Legendary, gotta respect it. Titles are there. <laughs> the titles are there. 
But we got some seasons that look super crazy. <laughs> I thought I only it's thought Death Row Death season. Row East was the only stretch for me on that record. Which one? I thought Death Row East. That was the uh-huh. only stretch. And then yeah, I felt And I then felt it came out to something that, made up. I felt like it got there was some then it just got some super momentum. And then yeah. it went from rare and it was just I heard rare and and I, I felt, you know, 14, 15. I was yeah. like, so I really home. love that record. I just let it roll, though. That's how I judge what I like if I want to yeah. hear it. If I never want to play it, then, you so, know. Speaking of, man, uh, like, so on my, a lot, like, a, one of my most played was the Migos record, Culture 3. And so, I mean, what do you, what, what, it's on my list, man, and you know I I I, I don't I necessarily it. have I just it. On it, right. but I just want to know if people have heard it and I skipped what, what, it. Yeah, I love this. Is why I love you, Nate, man. <laughs> I know you very well. <laughs> I would have never thought that you were in there turning up uh-huh. the culture three, and I'm not surprised. But uh, <laughs> Migos are fun, man. They are who they are. Yeah, they're man. Quiet. They're like. <laughs> Pringles that I eat, man. I eat certain Pringles. Like, it is not good for my diet, but I know what I'm getting as soon as I eat it. You know what I mean? So I turn them on. I have a good time. I think, I think man, I think what, what turned me on to it was something, you know, some some production thing where they were talking about this, the Migos are doing this thing, and nobody thinks it's right, but this is how their sound is. So I turned it on. It's like, man, this sounds dope. And so I, you know, it's like I'm trying to, like, go for that but it's something that informs my my yeah. thinking so that so it's like you know there's no fucking limitations to what you do to make something sound like you want it to sound as a producer you have to be that way yeah, yeah. yeah. you have like to have the most like criminal like well the uh because the migos are dope to me it's just yeah, they are. it's just one of the it's like it's like Coldplay almost, like it's the same song. So Bingo. that's what I'm saying. That was what my Pringles analogy was. It's like I know what I'm getting. It's like it's a good song. It's just the same song. That's all. Bingo. <laughs> that's just, that's, that's uh, holy shit, man. That's man. That's Coldplay. That's it's the, that man. That hit. That man. Telling right now, you better say something about Adele. <laughs> <laughs> has, there, has there been any mention of AZ's album, Do or Die Two? I heard the single. I did check the album. Was it good? Is it I, good? I, I enjoyed it. it. Yeah, There's about it. two songs I'll, that I would have would have passed on, but other than that, I thought, especially for sequels, I always get thrown off when people have part two of like mm-hmm. what is their legendary record. It was yeah. really good, man. It was it's really enjoyable. It was really enjoyable. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll have to check it out. I heard it on the ra- I heard it on the XM radio. They were playing some of the singles, and uh, a lot of- I was like, "This is dope. This is dope." A lot of people drop really good records. Sky Zoo dropped a good record. Blue dropped a good record, and they're kind of like they fall in that like you know what you're gonna get. But mm-hmm. like I thought, Sky Zoo, the production choice this time was a little more exciting. You know, mm-hmm. a little bit more exciting. I thought he went. He stepped out of New York a little bit and, you know, got some synth bass and some stuff like that and did his typical, you know, his Brooklyn flow. But it sounded good over these soundscapes. And I really enjoyed it. I mean, Milk's a big fan of him and I've always liked Sky Zoo, but. Yeah, no, but I, you know, I, yeah, yeah, I was like, I was working on a record, so I have to be careful because I get down and just like the dudes I'm listening to. So yeah. I try. Not listening to too many guys, but I caught the ones I caught. You know, Reach's record is yeah. dope. We mentioned your record. You, it's I, really you good. Know, your record. We we did, but it's worth Thank another you. mention. Absolutely, yeah. It is. Reach's record is very good. Mm-hmm. But, but he knows it's good. He put it out. He already. Yep. <laughs> I, I mean, him. I was hoping. You know. <laughs> I mean, especially the people I know, like. Yeah. Uh, UND's record, Reach's record, and Milk's record have, yeah. you know, appreciate it. Are really, and, and like I told you, it's not any gas. It's like the same things yeah. I've called y'all and told y'all. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Y'all's. 
I've been trying to tap into more local stuff. Like I was listening to um a young guy named uh Southside Dane. I know who he is. He's dope. He's from Grandview, I think. Yep. He put out a dope project. Uh Don't Be Like Me is what it was called. I thought he put out Pretty Girls Love Dame uh <laughs> this year, but that was last year. But yeah, I like him with Kai Colors. He's a Kai fan, Kai. man. It's, it's, uh, if you heard it this year, you heard it yeah, this year. Yeah, I say, because I heard, yep. like, I got into him and uh, Kai Colors this year. I uh-huh. found out they were from here because it, I don't know. Like, I was listening to, I was in way too much Mozzie. <laughs> I was just listening to Mozzie because my nephew listens to a lot of Mozzie. And I'll get in the car with him and I'm like, this new? Like, that's the thing about guys like Mozzie. They put out so much music. It's like, I thought I heard his last pro- Like, nah, this new it just came out. Are you one of those guys who drops every three months? Yep. You know? That, that's kind of like what I was saying about Migos and Sky Zoo, where there's nothing wrong with them. It's yeah. just like, you know what you're going to get with the project. And then when there's a fluctuation in them, you're like, oh, you, you stand up a little bit. You're like, oh, I'm hearing something new. Because this album could have been the album that was released in 2017 and it's consistently good. It's just yeah. very, you know, you knock out the, they not, their vision of what they're trying to do. They yeah. execute it, but the wife you know, said was, that Adele had the album of the year. She had to put her vote in. Yeah. <laughs> You're not going to get on camera, but okay. Adele put out yeah. album, guys. Yeah. One vote for Adele. All right. Adele. I'm going to, I'm going to, you guys stay on. Till, I'm going to ask you a question in just a second. I'm going to make a little break here because we're coming up toward an hour. So, uh, listeners, thanks for listening. We'll be back next week uh, with more best music we heard in 2021. It's been the Long Play Listening Party. (laughs) 